Hey folks, welcome back. This is a redo on the video on how to publish to Windows with your Unreal 5 build. The first one didn't have sound, this one has sound. All right, so I've got my project open that I'm going to try and publish. Uh, and I will go up here to platforms and I'm gonna open this up. And the first thing I wanna do is make sure that my targeted build, which is gonna be Windows for me, has the Unreal icon and it doesn't have a warning icon. This means that I'm gonna be able to send it to Windows to package and I can go through all of the preparatory steps to get it warmed up and ready. So the way that I typically do this is I do a few things to make sure that everything works first. So I go up to build and I say build all levels. This will take a minute and it'll ask me what I want to do, uh, whether I want to build HLODs or whether I want to delete HLODs, and I'm just going to say build HLODs. It's going to ask me to save anything that I've been working on, and then it's going to take a little while to warm up and build everything that's in all of my levels. I'm going to let this run, and essentially what this is doing is it's just getting all of the elements of your level ready built up, pre-configured, so it will run as smoothly as possible. I didn't get any errors there, so I'm looking all good. And the next thing I do after that is I go back to platforms, and under this quick launch, there's one that should say the name of your machine, and I hit the name of my machine. That's gonna go down here, and it's gonna verify my SDK and that the device is ready. I'm gonna save any things that are open and then it's gonna start launching. I can open up the output log if I wanna see what's happening. Sometimes I'll see some yellow text, which is warnings. Warnings, I feel like are fairly common when I'm doing the packaging, but red text is a problem and the build is usually gonna fail and we usually have to figure out what's wrong and fix it when I see red text. Okay, this is usually fairly quick. If you've done it once already, <coughs> excuse me, all of the subsequent builds are usually a little bit quicker. Okay, so it's saying completed launch on stage and it's starting the client. So it's gonna open up this quick build in a new window. And here we go. This is my tutorial. It's working, I can control it, I can move around, fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the X to close out of that. And so I know that Unreal can build a self-standing quick build. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is do my full build. So I go back to platforms, I go down to Windows if I'm building to Windows. If you're working on a Mac computer, you should be able to also build to Mac. So if you wanna take those steps, you should be able to do something very similar to what we're doing here. And now I can go and say package project. But before I do that, I wanna point out a few things. So the first thing is that the configuration is gonna use project settings and the settings typically default to development. You're doing a developmental build. You're not doing a final build. If you want the highest quality of your build, you wanna actually change this to shipping before you click package project. But I actually wanna take a look at those project settings. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to pause, go up to file, edit I mean, and project settings, and that's gonna open up all of my settings for my project. I can go down here under project where it says packaging. I can open that up and right about here under project is build configuration. So if I wanted to change this for everything moving forward, I could change this to shipping. This is pretty common. Like as you're doing developmental builds, you would leave this as development and then after you've worked out all of your kinks and your bugs, you would then go down to shipping and you would be building a higher quality build, which often takes a little more time. Um, the other thing that we can take a look at here or we need to take a look at here is actually the map that we're building. So, oops, boy, there we go. I'm gonna bring that back. Um, 
So the other thing that we need to look at is maps and modes. If we click on maps and modes, the default map, game default map specifically, right now is the first person map. These tutorials that I've been doing, introducing us to Unreal, have all just been in the first person template. I didn't start from scratch, I started from their template. If that's what you did, then you don't have to change anything here. But if you've created a new level or you've done a save as and saved your map with a new name, you're gonna need to change this setting of default game map to the map that you wanna be starting. So as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of my other tutorials and I could just select one of those from this dropdown and that is going to be the map that the game loads when you publish it. One thing I'm gonna say in this video probably a few times is make sure you test what you build. For my own students, it's pretty disappointing when I'm the first person to upload, or sorry, to open their package and I open it up and it's just a template and doesn't actually include any of their work. So whatever you do, make sure that you test the game before you turn it in. Um, the other thing that we can do is if you're in the habit of opening this editor up and wanting to start working on your map right away, you can also change the editor startup map to the map that you're typically working on. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to packaging for right now and I'm gonna change this to shipping. Looks like I already did. So it looks like I'm all good here. I'm gonna close this and now I'm gonna go to platforms, windows, and you can see that looks like I already overwrote it, but I can change that back to use project settings. And if that's development or if that's shipping, it's gonna use those settings. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to package project. I click that and it is going to open up a, a location for me to save. So in my Unreal 5 projects folder, I have a folder called build. And what I typically do here is I typically create a new folder, which is going to be my publish tutorial. And then I double click to go inside, double click to go inside of that. And I say select folder. That's gonna start the packaging project and I can now click show output log and it's gonna show me all of the steps that it's running through in order to package this project. Now, this can typically take a while, especially if it's the first time that you've built this project. See all that yellow? That's all warnings, but it's all okay. Um, while this is building, there's a few other things that I want to mention to you. First off, in your content drawer, if you have a bunch of content that you're not actually using in your game, it's quite often that it will get packaged in your game. So if you're using Paragon characters or if you're using other things, other assets that you've downloaded from the marketplace, your project can get extremely big, extremely fast. So one of the things that you might wanna do here, what I like to do is I make a copy of my project and then I try and pull out all of the stuff that I'm not actually using in my project to try and make sure that I'm getting a small build. I make a copy of my project in case I accidentally delete something that is actually referenced by the game. The next thing is that sometimes you'll get an error message and you'll want to figure out how to fix it. So I'm just going to open up my Visual Studio here we go. So Visual Studio is where we utilize, or what Unreal utilizes for packaging a lot of its code. Uh, and so sometimes you'll get an error message that you're missing a piece of Visual Studio to package your project. So I'll open Visual Studio 2019. I'll continue without code. I'll pull that in here. And if you get an error message about something missing, you can go to Tools, Get Tools and Features. Once you have this open, you will actually, I already did this earlier, but you typically you'll get this first, and then you'll go to the one that Unreal is using, which right now I think most of us are still using Visual Studio Community 2019, and we will say Modify. 
go to individual components and then write in here the exact error message that is the component that is missing and then you can simply check it to turn it on. You'll then hit modify and it'll update your Visual Studio and hopefully that'll fix that error for you. Okay, so it looks like this is actually packaged super quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a finder window. I've got my finder window open in the other screen and let's go ahead and try and find my project. Okay, so here we go. I'm in my Unreal 5 projects folder in the build folder where I saved the published tutorial. I can go into this folder and it's created a folder called Windows. If I go into the Windows folder, there is now an EXE, a folder which is contains all of the content that I put into my game, and then there is another folder called Engine, which is the game engine that makes it run. There's also some text files in here, which tell me what's packaged in these things. And if I'm going to send this game to someone, I don't need these text files, I could just remove them, but I need to send all three of these things which are in the Windows folder. I'm in the habit of just renaming this Windows folder. For instance, I would say my last name, first name, assignment, and turn that in. Although I'm in such the habit of not using underscores now since Unreal doesn't like it. And I in fact shorten things so much because Unreal doesn't like it. So I would do something like this and then I would give this entire folder, I didn't move this entire folder to the computer that I'm showcasing my project on, or I would zip up this entire folder and turn it in however you're turning it in if you're a student. But if you're not, and all you wanna do is play your game, simply double click your EXE, and everyone should double click their EXE and test it to make sure it works before turning it in. And make sure all of your scripts work and that everything is functioning. All right, there we go. Thanks for joining. Please let me know if you've got any questions, if you run into any problems. Uh, most of my students should not have any problems with the Visual Studio or the, with the Windows SDK or with the Microsoft.NET Core SDK because all of our lab computers are the same. But some of you who are not my students, who are just my followers and subscribers out there, might run into some problems. I can try and troubleshoot for you, but there are a wide variety of things that could go wrong. And I'll answer in the comments with some links if you do run into some of those things. All right, enjoy.